on mine action, the path to reaching sustainable development goals. My name is Eldar Rasulov. I will be the moderator of the conference for two days. If you have any, uh, uh, any questions, any requests, just approach to any of the orga organizers. You can also approach me. Without further ado, I want to uh, proceed to the official part of the conference. And I want to invite the first speaker, the senior advisor of the office of the president of Azerbaijan, Mr. Sultan Hajiev. Mr. Hajiev, the floor is yours. Thank you, Eldar. Good morning to all of you and welcome. Welcome to Azerbaijan and welcome to Ardam. They say seeing is believing. I'm sure that while traveling to Ardam, you've seen enough. There is a lot we can talk about right now, and we will, I'm sure, in the next day and a half. However, before we proceed any further, I would like to invite you to join us, the Azerbaijanis, in paying a tribute to the memory of the person whose vision, whose wisdom, whose energy has made today possible. I'm talking about the national leader who many, many years back, when Azerbaijan was making first steps after regaining its independence under most difficult conditions, has embarked on a path of liberation of the, occupied, of the occupied territories and has made the reconstruction and rehabilitation we are all witnessing today possible. I'm talking about someone whose life we celebrated only several days ago as the whole nation marked his hundreds anniversary. I'm talking about Haydar Aliyev. Now I'm asking my colleagues to put the video on. Thank you. Can we also turn off the lights? Azərbaycan xalqının gələcəyi üçün gecə-gündüz çalışan Ulu Öndər bir sıra strateji uzaq görən qərarlar verirdi. Onun qəbul etdiyi belə qərarlardan biri də 1998-ci ildə müharibənin təsirində məruz qalmış ərazilərimizi mina və partlamamış hərbi sursatlardan təmizləmək üçün mina təmizləmə agentliyinin yaradılması idi. Kimdirmin Cil vətən müharibəsində Ali Başkomandan Prezident İlham Əliyevin rəhbərliyi ilə qazanılan tarixi qələbə nəticəsində Azərbaycanın öz ərazi bütövlüyünü bərpa etməsindən sonra Mina təhlükəsi ilə mübarizə ümumilli prioritetə çevrildi və 2021-ci ildə Prezidentin müvafiq fərmanı ilə Azərbaycan Respublikasının Mina təmizləmə agentliyinin statusu yüksəldilərək, Azərbaycanda Mina təmizləmə sahəsində bütün fəaliyyətin idarə edilməsi öhdəliyi həvalə edildi. Anama işğaldan azad edilmiş ərazilərin mina və partlamamış hərbi sursatlardan təmizlənməsi kimi böyük vəzifəni həyata keçirmək üçün öz potensialını əhəmiyyətli dərəcədə artırır və inkişaf etdirir. 2021-ci ildən etibarən anama vətən həsrətində olan insanlarımızın doğma yurdlarına qayıdışı, davamlı və dayanıqlı yaşayış mühidinin yenidən qurulması istiqamətində qarşıya çıxan çətinliklər nöqtəsindən gəlmək üçün əlavə insan resursları və avadanlıq səfərbər edərək yeni texnologiyaların tədbiqinə başladı. Anamanın fəaliyyəti bugün davam edir və uzun illərdə davam edəcək. Bizim cəsur mina axtaranlarımız böyük qayıdışa öz həqiqi tövbələrini verməkdən qürur duyurlar. Biz azadıq, biz müstəqilik, biz sərbəstdik, biz heç kəsdən asılı deyilik, biz özümüz öz talihimizin sahibiyik. Bilirsiniz, bunun üçün, yalnız bunun üçün aylarla əziyyət çəkmək olar, illərlə əziyyət çəkmək olar, illərlə aş qalmaq olar, məhz bunun üçün.
Okay, now it's on. Uh, thanks again. We are all aware of the threats and dangers of the mines, but there are people who know it firsthand. These are mine survivors, and these are people who are fighting mines daily, the deminers. I would like to invite to this stage two persons. One of them is a mine survivor, and the other one is a person who is fighting the hidden seeds of death deadly. Halig Malim, Hafiz Malim, I'm asking you to come to the stage. I met almost Halig Malim, Hafiz Malim. Hürmetli hanımlar ve cenablar, her birinizi hoş gördük, salamlayıram ve çok sahili minadan zarar çekmişler adından, onların özlerinin ve ailelerinin adından size çoklu salamlar getirmişim. Ben Azimzade Hafiz Selimoğlu, Ağdam Mekanik Tuvarma İdarəsinin reisi vəzifesində çalışıram. Miniye düşmüşüm, miniye düşməmişdən əvvəl də bu vəzifədə çalışırdım. Ancaq hürmetli hanımlar ve cenablar, sonra her birinizi... Yani, 2021-ci il mart ayının üçündə təxminən saat 15.30 radələrində nəməlum şəraitdə minaya düşmüşəm. Həmin anları tez-tez xatırlayıram, həmin anlar tez-tez yadıma düşür. Heç bir kəsə, nəinki insana, hətta canlıya, heyvana da mən o anların minaya düşməyi arzulamıram. Yəni, belə olar deyərdim ki, hətta heç mən düşmənimi də minaya düşməyə heç vaxtı arzulamazdım. Bu günləri mənim bir hissəm, sağ ayağım amputasiya olunubdu, dağılmış, kətlərin dağılmış vəziyyətini görürsünüz. Bu anları mən hər görəndə həmən 2021-ci il mart ayının 3-ü 15-30 radələrini hər bu dağılmış, virana qalmış yerləri görəndə bir də xatırlayıram. Və heç kəsə arzulamazdım. Ancaq mən bu günləri dünyanın müxtəlif yerlərindən burada əyləşmiş, və mina təhlükəsinin qarşısını almaq üçün və minadar zərər çəkənlərə köməkli etmək üçün, bu məsələlərin aradan qaldırılması üçün gələn nümayəndə heyətə və mütəxəssislərə üzümü tutub xayiş edirəm və hətta acizana bir yalvarış edirəm ki, nəyin ki Azərbaycanda, dünyanın heç bir yerində mina partlayışı, minadan əziyyət çəkmək, minaya düçar olmaq işlərinin qarşısını alınmasını rica edərdim və eyni zamanda Anama təşkilatına böyük minnətdarlığımı bildirirəm. Mən fəxr eləyirəm ki, bizim Azərbaycanımızda, doğma vətənimizdə anama təşkilatı kimi bir təşkilat var ki, mən mühəndis kimi bu ərazilərə suyun istiqamətləndirilməsi, tənzimlənməsi işlərinə əlaqədar olaraq hər gələndə onların köməkliyindən istifadə edirik. Onlar müəyyən olunmuş bizim xaricilərimizi nəzərə alaraq, təklifərimizi nəzərə alaraq əraziləri tənzimləyirlər ki, minadan təmizləyirlər ki və biz də bir daha miniyə düşməyək və öz işimizi rahat görək. Bunun üçün bir daha mina təşkilatının rəhbəri və bütün heyətinə dərin minnətdarımı bildirirəm. Diqqətiniz üçün minnətdaram. Sağ olun. Salam, əvvəlcə mən hər birinci salamlayıram. Mən Xalik Sülfüqarov, özüm Cəbrar rayonlanam. Mənim də ailəm digər ailələr kimi Cəbrar rayonundan məcburi köşkün düşüb. 2004-cü ildən mən ana masralarında minaxtaran vəzifəsində çalışmağa başlamışam və hal-hazırda anamanın Ağdam rayonunda apardığı mina təmizləmə əməliyyatlarına rəhbəri eləyirəm. Mən də bizim kollektimizdə hamısı bir amal uğrunda işləyirlər ki, Ərazilər mina təhlükəsindən azad olsun və vətəndaşlarımız öz torpaqlarına təhlükəsiz qayda bilsinlər. Məndən əvvəl Hafiz Məllim danışdı və demək istəyirəm, talih ilə gətirib ki, Hafiz Məllim miniyə düşən an ilk ora gələnlərdən biri də mən olmuşam və mən o faciəni, o hadisəni öz gözlərimlə görmüşəm və bizim işlədiyimiz dövrəcində belə hadisələrlə biz tez-tez qarşılaşırıq və anama nümayəndələr olaraq Həmən ərazilərə ilk səfər eləyən, ilk edən minyə düşmüş şəxslərə yardım eləyən, onu təhlükər ərazidən çıxardan bizlər oluruq. Biz bu cür faziyyəli hadisələri tez-tez görürük, lakin nə qədər çox görsək də insan bu hadisələri görməyə vərdiş eləyə bilmir. Çünki çox ağır faziyyələrdir, kimsə həyatını itirir, kimsə müxtəlif dərəcəli bədən xatirətlər alır. Biz ərazidə olduğumuz vaxtı, işlədiyimiz vaxtı hər şey adi halda öz qaydəsindən gedərkən, hər şey gözəl olduğu vaxtı təbiət yaxşı, təmiz hava 
Və bir də bir xəbər eşitirik ki, hansısa bir ərazidə min alçası baş verib və ora gedib həmən faciəni biz öz gözlərimizlə görürük. Bu da bizim üçün çox ağırdır, çox dəyişətlidir. Biz bir şey unutmamalıyıq ki, mina gözə görünməyən bir düşməndir və biz gözə görünməyən düşmənlə mübarizə aparırıq və mina elə bir qurğudur ki, o torpağın altında dayanıb hər bir an öz qurbanın gözlüyür. Və bugün bura yığışmaqda mən sizə də xüsusi minnətlərini bildirirəm, hamıza təşəkkür edirəm ki, nəyin ki, Azərbaycanda həmçinin mina təhlükəsi olan digər ölkələrdə də mina təhlükəsinin qarşısını almaq üçün, ərazilərin təmizlənməsi üçün siz də əlinizdən gələn səhər göstərirsiniz və bu işdə apardığınız işlərdə göstərdiyiniz fəaliyyətdə sizin hər birinizə təşəkkür edirəm. Çox sağ olun. Thank you, Hafiz Məlim, Halik Məlim. Azerbaijan has a very particular objective in undertaking major demining operations. They are preconditioned for reconstruction rehabilitation. It's a top priority for the country and the whole nation is working to achieve this purpose as soon as possible. And yet there are people who are playing a bit of a more special role. I have once referred to them being the field marshals it's, it's a sign of the importance that these people are carrying for reconstruction rehabilitation activities in the country. There are three, and we have the pleasure of being host of one of them. I would like to introduce Mr. Emin Hussainov, who is special representative of the President of the Azerbaijan Republic and our host, to welcome you because this is his home, this is his domain, Whatever you see here is a direct outcome of his tireless efforts in line with the plans of the nation. Please, Emin Manim, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, dear conference participants, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me a great pleasure to welcome you to the second international conference on mining activity the path to reaching sustainable development goals organized by ANAMA and the United Nations in our lovely Agdam city. During the past period from great victory in the Second Karabakh War, significant works have been carried out in the direction of cleaning the occupied territories from mines and unexploded ordinances building modern living, production, and service infrastructure, revival of economic activity, reconstruction of transport and communication lines. The great return to Azerbaijan's deoccupied territories has been identified as one of the five national priorities of Azerbaijan until 2030. As a result, as a continuation of this process, on November 16, 2022, the President of the Republic of Azerbaijan, His Excellency Mr. Ilham Aliyev, signed the decree on the approval of the first state program on great return to Azerbaijan's liberated territories. The five-year action plan was prepared in order to achieve the goals set in the framework of the restoration and sustainable development of these territories and to optimize the implementation of the state program. In accordance with the state program, six highways, two railways are currently being built, Zafar Road, Tartar Sugovshan Talish Road, Talish Tapkaragoyen Gashalti Sanatorium Road, Fizuli Hadrud and uh, other highways have already been completed and opened for use. In addition, the design of intercity roads in Agdam and Fizuli cities have been completed and construction will start soon. And of course, the magnificent Fizuli International Airport was built and handed over in a record time of eight months in a heavily contaminated minefield. In terms of social infrastructure, four school projects are currently being implemented. Two schools and one kindergarten have already been put into use. The construction of two central hospitals in Agdam and Fizuli will start in coming days. 
20 private residential houses and 10 non-residential facilities have been already completed and handed over to returning IDPs in the first phase of Talish Village. Currently, three residential complexes are under construction in Agdam and Fizuli in total. During this year, construction works will be started on five residential complexes and four villages in Agdam, one residential complex and seven villages in Fizuli, Hadrut Settlement, and Tuch Village, village in Khojavand, residential buildings in Sugovishan, and second phase of Talish Village. They implemented purposeful and large-scale projects, serve the rapid revival of Karabakh, the sustainable settlement of the population, and the provision of sustainable economic activity, as well as laying a solid foundation for the transformation of those areas into a highly developed region. It should be noted that one of the main problems we're facing during the reconstruction of liberated territories is excessive contamination of the territory with landmines and other explosive ordinances. Until now, despite all the difficulties Azerbaijan has faced, it continues full-scale demining operations in the liberated territories. In this regard, the activity of the Azerbaijan National Agency for Mine Action should be especially noted. In addition to the demining activities, ANAMA raising awareness among the population living near the liberated territories, as well as returning IDPs by conducting awareness trainings on the danger of mines and unexploded ordinances, and also safety behavior rules. I would like to take this opportunity to express my thanks and gratitude to all the employees of ANAMA and their partners, we wish them success in their difficult, dedicated, and honorable work. At last, I wish all success to the work of the conference. Thank you again for your attention. Thank you, Emin Malim. Uh, Azerbaijan takes pride in uh, the results of the reconstruction rehabilitation programs that we're implementing. It's a top priority for the country, and as emphasized by the head of state, our President Ilham Aliyev, safe, dignified, and voluntary return of IDPs is of crucial importance for us. Now I would like to turn to the next two guests who are not guests, of course. They are the hosts. They are the organizers of the today's event. Today's event is a product of partnership between the government of Azerbaijan, represented by ANAMA. I don't think I need to explain what ANAMA is. This is a national demining agency of the country. And also our longtime partners on demining United Nations. I would like to invite Mr. Ugar Suleymanov, who is the chairman of the board of ANAMA, to address the conference participants. Ugar Malin, please. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear guests, I am glad to welcome all of you at the second international conference on mine action, the path to reaching sustainable development goals. We are in Agdam today. This once beautiful city carries the scars of landmines and explosive remnants of war. Agdam stands as a touching reminder of the urgent need uh, to deal with mines and explosive remnants of war. The city itself is a victim of mines. We are here because of a shared commitment to discuss solutions and forge partnership that will pave the path towards a safer, more prosperous future without mines. Our conference is organized jointly by Mine Action, Mine Action Agents of the Republic of Azerbaijan and the United Nations. Uh, I am thank my UN colleagues for their valuable partnerships. 
more than 190 participants from 51 countries around the world are attending our forum. It's an opportunity to each of us to discuss global problems of landmines while identifying local solutions. Landmines and explosive remnants of war remain one of the most serious threats of peace, development and progress in many regions of the world. Azerbaijan, one of the most contaminated uh, landmine contaminated countries in the world, with landmines scattered across the conflict affected territories, posing a severe threat to the safety and well being of people. This hidden hazard not only caused human tragedies, but has also hindered social and economic development. It's also a major obstacle for peace and stability in the region. Since November 2020, extensive demining operations by Azerbaijan have resulted in the clearance of more than 81,000 hectares of lands from mines and unexploded ordinances. A total of more than 88,000 landmines and other explosive remnants of war have been discovered and neutralized, including more than 28,000 antipersonal mines, more than 15,000 anti-tank mines, and more than 44,000 unexploded ordinances. Despite the progress made, the threat of land mines persists. In the last 30, 32 months, 302 citizens of Azerbaijan fell victim to mines and explosive remnants of war. 57 of them died, 245 sustained injuries. Since the beginning of the conflict caused by the territorial claims by Armenia in 1991, a total of 3,381 citizens of Azerbaijan lost their lives or been injured in mine incidents, with 358 of them being children and 38 women. I hope that we will share insights and experiences, explore important topics related to mine action, emphasizing collaborative approaches, successful models of cooperation and strategies to mitigate the devastating effects of landmines and explosive remnants of war. While the specific mine threat may vary across different regions, we must recognize that widespread harm caused by landmines remains a global challenge. The threat they pose is not limited to any particular country or region. It is a menace that all nations must combat collectively. No people should suffer from mines and explosive remnants of war, irrespectively of their nationality. During the conference, we will hopefully not only examine the challenges at hand, but also seek innovative solutions. By fostering a collaborative environment and leveraging the uh, expertise of all stakeholders present here, we can make significant strides towards achieving the sustainable development goals and creating a safer, more prosperous world. I have mentioned SDGs. Demining is of great importance for achieving them. We believe demining to be integral part of the SDGs process. It is for this reason the new National Sustainable Development Goal on Humanitarian Demining has been introduced in Azerbaijan by His Excellency uh, President Ilham Aliyev. We're also promoting the global SDG 18 on humanitarian demining as no other SDG can be achieved in the conflict affected areas without successful humanitarian mine action. Uh, I thank each and every one of you for joining us today. Your presence here is a proof to your commitment and dedication to the cause of mine action. 
Let us seize this opportunity to engage in constructive dialogue, build new networks and platforms, uh, transform our efforts into concrete actions way towards a mind-free world. Uh, thank you, uh, and I wish you all a productive conference. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Vugarmani. And now I'm inviting the second co-organizer, UN resident coordinator to Azerbaijan, Ms. Vladanka Andreeva. Uh, well, that's what I call a real commitment, right, Vladanka? I hope it helps healing. So, you need any help? Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. And it's really um, a true pleasure on behalf of the UN family in Azerbaijan to welcome you all to the second international conference on mine action. And obviously, this is the way to achieve sustainable development goals. This is my first function to attend in person since I have my knee surgery. And I'm doing this just to say how significant the support that we are offering to Azerbaijan is when it comes to mine action. We are very clear that we want to go hand in hand with the government to support them in their efforts. Hence, me and my colleagues, I have my colleagues from UNDP, UNICEF, UNACR, UN Habitat, together with us. As most of you are aware, it can cost as little as one dollar to make a landmine. But it takes more than a thousand dollars to safely remove one. These explosive hazards are threatening the safety, health, well-being, lives, and livelihoods of generations of people in over 60 countries. The most vulnerable, including women and children, are the most affected ones. Allow me to share with you some quite alarming statistics that highlight the devastating impact of mines and explosive remnants of war. I would like to cite the Landmine Monitor Report from 2022. Staggering number of 5,544 individuals have lost their lives or sustained injuries just in 2021. In the context of Azerbaijan, the grim reality is disheartening too. Since 1991, a total of 3,381 people, Bugar Melim just mentioned the number, including 358 children, have tragically fallen victim to landmines. Just within the past two years, 55 precious lives have been lost. My UN family uh, and I were in Dam on 17 of March, and why in the same venue we were having a high-level dialogue with the government, two people have lost their lives. An additional 244 individuals have been severely injured over the last two years. The urgency to address this dire situation becomes even more apparent when we consider the vast expanse of land in Azerbaijan spanning several thousand square kilometers that is designated as the priority area for humanitarian demining. Until these areas are cleared of landmines, the safe return of internally displaced people remain impossible. Moreover, the construction of essential infrastructure, the development of roads, and the cultivation of farmland are all impeded. These facts shed light on the critical need for concerted efforts and resources to accelerate humanitarian demining activities in Azerbaijan. 
However, we should not let the magnitude of this challenge divert our attention from Anama's significant accomplishments thus far. And I really want to take this opportunity. In the past, I have done that publicly many times. But today, again, Vugar Melim, I really want to congratulate Anama on its achievements. And I think we all have a shared utmost gratitude and admiration for the commitment of Anama's brief mind clearance experts who tirelessly work to eliminate the danger of explosive ordnance offer facing significant personal risk. The UN in Azerbaijan is very proud of its long-standing partnership with Anama since 1999. In the aftermath of the conflict in 2020, the UN helped mobilize more than 11 million US dollars with financial support and generosity of our partners, the European Union, the government of United Kingdom, other partners and internal UN resources, three UN agencies, UNDP, UNICEF, and UNACR are supporting Anaman's mine action efforts through institutional strengthening, provisional of technical expertise, and explosive ordnance risk education. Ladies and gentlemen, mine action in countries affected by landmines, including Azerbaijan, is a fundamental requirement for sustainable development and lasting peace. And we must ensure that the path towards achieving sustainable development goals is clear of landmines and explosive remnants of war. Over the past three years, the world has faced numerous challenges that in a way have really backslid the progress towards sustainable development goals. And the United Nations Secretary General has recently emphasized the urgent need to increase commitment, solidarity, and transformative action to prevent us from falling short of the headline targets of the 2030 Agenda. In September, just in a couple of months, the world leaders will convene at the United Nations headquarters in New York in an attempt to rescue the Sustainable Development Goals and reinvigorate our collective efforts. Since the inception, there has been a very strong political will, commitment, and action on the side of Azerbaijan to implement 2030 Agenda. And as the country continues its journey of accelerated progress, we, the UN family, look forward to further strengthening partnerships to advance the sustainable development goals, including through mine action. And sincere congratulations to the government for acknowledging the importance of mine action and introducing it as an additional national sustainable development goal. Together, let's embark on this transformative journey, united in one purpose, to have a mind-free world. Thank you very much for your attention, and I wish you a super successful conference. Well, thank you very much, Ms. Andreeva. Uh, I want to underline that we will have several panel discussions uh, to, uh, today and tomorrow, but to today you also will uh, have a chance to witness by yourself the result of a great effort that our brave the miners had applied in order to ensure safe comeback of our citizens to our liberated territories. Uh, of course, as a result of that effort, we are also capable of hosting international conferences here. Uh, so it's time for us to proceed to our first panel discussion that will be held on uh, humanitarian demining in reconstruction and rehabilitation. It will be 
moderated by a member of European Parliament from 2004 to 2019 and CEO of Hyder Global BVBA Strategic Consultant Brussels, Mr. Sajjad Karim. Please. So I want to call the panelists of the first discussion. Please, uh, just a second, Mr. Panelists. I want to invite ex-Prime Minister of Kyrgyzstan, Mr. Jomart Otorbaev. Head of the Country Explosive Defense Engagement Office of UK MOD, Mr. Bert Appleton. <laughs> Head of Department for Sustainable Development and Social Policy, Minister of Economy of the Republic of Azerbaijan, Mr. Hussein Husseinov. <laughs> and Head of Recovery Solutions and Human Mobility from UNDP, Luca Renda. and External Relations and Policy Advisor from GISC HD, Angela Hoyos Ibora. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, um, I'm really up against the clock. Um, this session was supposed to finish at 1 p.m. That certainly won't be happening. Uh, but uh, my instructions are to try and move as swiftly as we possibly can. Uh, and in order to do so, I've done two things. One, cut out my opening remarks altogether, which I'm sure many will be pleased to know. Uh, and secondly, I hope the panelists will forgive me, but I've cut out uh, any meaningful introductions uh, because the panelists were so experienced, I really was going to take a huge amount of time in running through all of that. Uh, may I thank you all for being here. May I thank both the United Nations and ANIMA uh, for inviting us all to this tremendous conference facility. It's my first visit here. I have different memories from uh, when I first came, so it's great to see the progress that is being made. So thank you for that. We'll move straight on to uh, the formal proceedings. Uh, our first speaker is His Excellency uh, Dushmart uh, Otarbayev, former Prime Minister of Kyrgyzstan. Uh, Your Excellency, thank you so much for making the time to be here. May I invite you to very kindly share your expertise and your thoughts for the conference today. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, uh, this visit is uh, very special for me. I'm first time in a sacred place of Karabakh, uh, which is famous in its history in terms of what happened along the dif different years in the history. And I would like to say that my goal today is to demonstrate my appreciation and sympathies to the brotherly nation of Azerbaijan in uh, restoring long-awaited peace in their country. So I came here to demonstrate this sympathy. Uh, my big thanks goes to the government of Azerbaijan and to organizers of this conference for the, it's clearly a huge success. Uh, around 200 participants from more than 50 countries are with us today. But my special thanks and gratitude goes to all participants of the conference which uh, decided to join efforts of the government and the nation to bring this long-suffered region to peace and prosperity. Because your recommendations and wisdom will be taken on board, I believe, not only by decision-makers of this country, but to all nations. This is a very important moment for our brother and nations of Azerbaijan. Uh, what I know 
uh, from my communication with authorities, and that is what I heard today, is that Azerbaijan is committed to uh, bring a lot of investments to the region. Last year, to my knowledge, maybe I'm mistaken, uh, it was investment in the range of $1.3 billion for, like special representative of president said, in restoration of infrastructure and bringing long-awaited possibility to, for the peace and for the prosperity to create educational institutions and at the end to bring, to create more jobs to the region. However, this cannot be done without making lives of people safe and secure. That is why uh, the priority of whole nation is the subject of this conference. And indeed, country and the region need expertise and wisdom of all of you who will be sharing with us during the next two days. So quick and decisive actions will be required. It's clearly a priority of the government and the country, but it will be going quicker if you will give great sets of recommendation on how to do it the best possible way. Azerbaijani nation, I believe, will never forget your wise contribution to restoration, peace and prosperity to this region. That is why I really, from the bottom of my heart, I wish to this conference great success and it will happen inevitably while I see in the atmosphere of today's meeting. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, thank you very much. Uh, if I may then move on to uh, Bert Appleton of Appleton Connections, uh, a very experienced uh, individual from within uh, the relevant sector, uh, has been head of the Counter-Explosive Defence Engagement Office of the UK Ministry of Defence also. Bert, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, firstly, uh, a thank you for the invitation to return to Azerbaijan and the privilege of uh, traveling to witness with our own eyes um, the devastation around and the efforts to rebuild and resettle in Agdam. I think that experience, in addition to the conference in uh, Baku, is really important. I'd also extend congratulations to our Azerbaijani colleagues for the uh, progress made in clearance of explosive remnants of war in construction and on that path to resettlement. I'm here to reinforce the UK MOD's commitment to a, our bilateral relationship and to our multi-agency approach to that with colleagues, many of whom are in the audience. I have the privilege of leading the counter-explosive ordnance defence engagement team in the UK MOD for the last five years with a model that I established to support our international partners where they address the threat and risk from explosive ordnance. What do we bring? Well, we bring hard-earned experience across the spectrum of counter-explosive ordnance. Uh, conventional rockets, mortars, grenades, um, secondary threats of white phosphorus, cluster munitions, depleted uranium, and improvised threats as well of improvised explosive devices and booby traps, all of which, as we know, are relevant. The actions we take and the support we offer is focused on the term we use of freedom of movement and action. And I think that's been encapsulated by colleagues who presented already uh, today. That is again focused on the reuse of land and ultimately on resettlement. And that all lines up with the path to sustainable development of the goals that we are familiar with and we are all here to support with our Azerbaijani hosts. We bring experience from time in the Balkans, which I know again is relevant and will appear later in the conference as well. So how do we do it? Well, we visit when invited, um, and we're delighted that we've been hosted a number of times in Azerbaijan, and my colleague Nigel Marsh, who is the uh, technical advisor to the team, this is his fourth visit, 
and his second visit to this region in Karabakh. And we listen. And I think that the journey to Agdam as part of that experience of listening to where we could, could offer solutions is particularly important. We had a very positive meeting yesterday uh, with colleagues in the Ministry of Defence, again, to make sure that we are aligning what our offers could be with specific requirements that have been identified by the people who understand that the best, our hosts. We designed that requirement and we have a framework of government-assured suppliers of training equipment and services. And it should give everybody confidence that in that framework of suppliers, I have over 450 veterans, those people who've served, uh, and as we heard from our, our respected uh, colleague in the demining um, uh, sector in, in Azerbaijan, uh, they understand exactly what we need to offer and how we need to uh, align with our colleagues uh, in step with them. We assure that delivery, um, and uh, my colleague Nigel and I were out in Azerbaijan uh, to witness the delivery and to observe where the train the trainer element uh, had been delivered and what effect that would have. And then we return uh, to measure the effect and make sure that we're aligning future support uh, learning lessons as we go along. The training we offer is aligned to international mine action standards and that gives us a strength and a consistency. And again, my colleague David Hewitson, who is in the audience, um, he has been instrumental in the development of those standards and I know there is work ongoing with the government to do further work on those and adopt them and we, we really support that. In addition, another colleague, Mark Boswell, here from UNDP as an advisor, uh, provides that consistent link through to UN standards, UN work and support and advice, uh, through to also to their conventions as well, which gives us a very strong position to move forward. We have successfully delivered explosive ordnance disposal and explosive hazard awareness training, and importantly, added into that a development to train the trainer part of sustainment in itself. We look at progressing that, uh, and I'd be delighted to engage with our colleagues over the next 24 to 48 hours, because we see this as a long-term commitment and a long-term relationship. We're also looking forward later this year to welcoming some of our Azerbaijani colleagues, some experts who have worked on the ground to the UK, to knowledge share with our experts and make sure that uh, the men and women on the ground who are demining can teach us to develop our procedures and uh, techniques. Um, and hopefully that will raise everybody's standards. So finally, I reaffirm the commitment we have to offer support of training equipment and services, to collaborate by listening to our experts uh, with the host nation, to capacity build and knowledge share, to provide government assurance of everything that we do to give confidence and to walk shoulder to shoulder with our Azerbaijani friends and wider agencies on that path to sustainable development once it's been cleared. Thank you. Bert, thank you and thank you for your commitment. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, next we have a presentation from Hussein Husseinov. Uh, Head of Department for Sustainable Development and Social Policy at the Ministry of Economy of the Republic of Azerbaijan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Taking your advice on timing issues, I will skip the thanks part and I will go to the microphone in order to have a presentation. Thank you. Thanks again for the conference management for location of sustainable development goal, targets and indicator presentation. Uh, okay, my presentation will based on two parts. Uh, the first part will based on 17 sustainable development goals. Uh, and the next one will based on, uh, yeah, next one will based on 18 national sustainable development goals initiatives. Uh, how many targets, how many indicators we have, uh, about the establishment process, about the analytical part of these initiatives. Before starting uh, 
to speak about 18th goal, National Sustainable Development Goal, I would like briefly state about uh, the action took place and implemented stage of sustainable development goals in Azerbaijan. As you are aware, this uh, initiative is based on four principles, universality, leaving no one behind, commitment to human rights and complexity. When we prepared 18 sustainable development goals, we took into consideration these four principles as well. At the same time, the scope of the document covered social, economic and environmental issues and we included in targets and indicators about the social impact, environmental impact and uh, economic impact of 18 sustainable development goals. Ladies and gentlemen, sustainable development goals required a good institutional mechanism in the country. The high-level leadership will post the process uh, more faster than uh, other cases. So, institutional mechanism in our country on October 6, in 2016, as you can see, uh, Mr. President gave an order establishment of National Coordination Council on Sustainable Development, which chaired by Deputy Prime Minister of the Republic of Azerbaijan. We have around 12 government institutions and organizations, ministries, committees, and other organizations inside of this uh, Coordination Council. At the same time, uh, stakeholder engagement is also an important process on sustainable development uh, implementation process in the country. During this seven years period of time, the Council engaged different uh, parts of societies like NGOs, private sector, academic institution to the process in order to make leaving no one behind in this process. Adaptation and integration process, this is another important part of sustainability process in the country. So during this period of time, more than 40 state programs, strategies and documents align with targets and goals of sustainable development goals adopted by United Nations. And the most important strategy adopted to SDGs, this is Azerbaijan 2030 National Priorities for Social Economic Development. And the strategy of, for the medium term period, Social Economic Development Strategy for the period of 2022-2026. At the same time, I would like to give this information as well. We have a separate program dedicated to the first state program on great return to the liberated territories of the Republic of Azerbaijan, which fully integrated goals, targets, and indicator of sustainable development goals in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, another important part of uh, implementation process of sustainable development goals, this is accountability. Uh, taking into consideration the guidelines of United Nations, uh, we have submitted three voluntary national review to Economic and Social Council of United Nations during the HLPF high-level political forum organized by this organization. Azerbaijan was among 10 countries around the world who submitted third voluntary national review. Now we are preparing for the next fourth national review who is coming here. At the same time, for internal accountability, each year, Secretariat has submitted presidential report to the presidential administration on implementation and action carried out during the year of period in Azerbaijan. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to mention from my personal view, our future start from these territories, actually. I grew up in this region, in Agdam, up to six years. And now our glorious victory ends the conflict and open entire new window, not for only Azerbaijan, but entire the region. Notwithstanding, we achieved the peace in historical territories, but still we have a big constraint established by Armenia with huge amount of buried mine in ground of Azerbaijan territories. Taking account in this process humanitarian demining for the country, Azerbaijan is currently <clears throat> established setting actually a particular national sustainable development goals was mentioned by Bugar Malam as well in his speech. And during the Azerbaijan, uh, during uh, actually uh, speech of taking into consideration these initiatives as a coordination council of national 
Coordination Council Sustainable Development with presidential administration with Anam and Lime Ministries. Around one uh, month period of time, we intensively worked on national sustainable development goals. We call it mine action. What was actually uh, <clears throat> main reasons for establishment of uh, special national uh, sustainable development goal? You can see that from statistics that since the end of the Second Karabakh War, actually, the government also mentioned about the statistics, uh, up to around 300 Azerbaijan have become victims of mines. According to preliminary study, <clears throat> more than 8,000 square kilometers of Azerbaijan territory was contaminated with mine and as explosive ammunition. At the same time, the fight against the threat of mines is directly aligned with 12 of sus uh, 17 sustainable development goals of UN and indirectly with other five goals. More than 60 countries of the world today suffer from landmines. Taking into all 18th national goal is named precisely according to international law. We have uh, the short name is Mine Action, SDG 18. But with visionary view, this is mine action for safe return, settlement, recovery, prosperity, and peace. We have here the targeted indicators, <clears throat> which entirely covered the need action by national bodies and international organizations. For the first target, which focus on clearing the areas of mines and unexploded ordnance, ensuring peace and security. In this umbrella, it's expected to track our activity and strengths on how many mines are cleared and naturalized annually for ensuring peace and security for all. You can see from two indicators that this is nationalizing liberated territories, the number of mines, in division of anti tank and anti-personal mines, and number of other explosives. We have another indicator here. <clears throat> this is areas cleared of mines and other unexploded ordnance in liberated territories by hectares, and the proportion of the total territory to the country by percentage. The next, the next uh, target you can see, this is a location of funds to clear areas of landmine and other explosive uh, munitions. Ladies and gentlemen, it's very important to engage financial flow to this mine action because it's not free, it's costly activities. In that case, international organizations and other donor organizations, we are strongly recommend to support this process around the world. Not only in Azerbaijan, as I mentioned, we have around 60 countries suffering from mine issues around the world. Here is, you can see two indicators here, to clear areas of mine and other explosive munition, and the total amount of fund raised from donor organization uh, for clearing of mine and other explosive munitions. In the next target, you can see this is creation of safe settlement condition in the liberated territories and reintegration of the population. This is a social part of uh, mine action SDG. We have here two indicators. The first one is the number of rebuilt settlement in the liberated territories. And the second indicator, this is the population of rebuilt settlement in liberated territories. The number by residential distribution, at the same time by the proportion to the number of total population in the country. The next indicator, this is the number of employed population in liberated territories. Employment activities, this is a first condition for integration of population um, uh, into the liberated territories. The permanent settled population, we have two sub-indexes here, and the temporary settled population in other explosive ordnance awareness activities. This is also as important to teach or to aware people about this dangerous situation when they will come to this uh, liberated territories or when they will reintegrate to this liberated territories. The next indicator, ladies and gentlemen, this is actually targets. This is involvement and land cleared from mines and other explosive into agricultural circulation. 
We have one indicator here stated about the areas involved in agricultural circulation in territories cleared of mine and other explosive munition. In other words, integrates this land into the economic activities. The next and last target is strengthening the medical, social rehabilitation and social protection of the population affected by mines and other explosive manuation. Here have the different disaggregated data cases. This is damage by mines and other explosive munition in a military personnel, those involved in demining of activities, the number of civilians involved in demining activities. We have a sub-indexes which died people, injured people, disabled population, and others. Uh, another important indicator here, this is number of persons affected by landmines and other explosive order covered by social pro protection programs. Because each year, the government, Minister of Labor and Social Protection, Minister of Health, allocation uh, amount of money for uh, rehabilitation process of this uh, population. So. By this indicator, we will uh, measure how many uh, money or uh, amount allocated from state budget to this rehabilitation process of this population. The amount of social payments in here, in national currency and US dollar, made in relation to victims of mines and other explosive manuations. This is another indicator. Uh, in, in this target, we have treatment cost, medical social rehabilitation cost, and the total amount of funds spent for social protection of population affected by mines and other explosive, explosive manuation. Ladies and gentlemen, this is summary of SDG uh, in Azerbaijan, which we prioritize 88 targets and 190 indicators. By accepting this national uh, sustainable development goal, our target will be 93, and our indicator will reach to 134. Each year, we will report directly to the presidential office uh, around 134 indicators, at the same time, 92 targets. At when we will submit our next national review to the high-level political forum, we will consider the mine action activities on this report as well. And this is mapping of implementation of target and indicator of 18 national sustainable development goals, which have a direct or indirect positive effect on implementation of global 17 SDGs. You can see how first target, second target, third target, fifth and uh, fourth target make an impact on all 12 SDGs uh, around the world. Thank you for your attention. Hussein, thank you. I didn't want to interrupt because I could see the amount of time that had gone into the preparation. It would have been unfair to stop you, I think. Uh, moving on now to our next contributor, Luca Render from the UNDP, is Head of Recovery Solutions and Human Mobility, um, Mine Action in a Recovery and Dis Displacement Stroke IDP Return Perspective. The floor is yours, Luca. Thank you very much, uh, Sajad, Excellencies, uh, distinguished guests, dear colleagues. Uh, I feel uh, really privileged to be here. Um, I embarked in this journey from New York to be here, to be present, to convey and reiterate the, uh, the support that uh, UNDP uh, is providing and con will continue to provide to the government of Azerbaijan. Um, uh, in their efforts uh, for reconstruction and, and, and recovery. Um, I, I, I feel, we all feel in, the, in, our, in our office here in Azerbaijan very proud to have been uh, a partner of ANAMA since its inception uh, back in 1998. So it's been almost 25 years of, of, of partnership. Um, we also have um, recently celebrated 30 years of engagement in, in mine action as UNDP worldwide. Uh, our first program started in, in Cambodia. Um, and uh, over time, we've also supported many um, recovery and reconstruction processes where my nation occupied a central role, uh, such as in Bosnia, Herzegovina, in Colombia, in Sri Lanka, Cambodia, Angola, 
Mozambique. And uh, there's a lot of lessons learned, a lot of good practices that have been accumulated over time that we will be more than happy and always to share with, with, the, um, with the government of, of, of Azerbaijan. And I'm sure uh, some of the delegations here for, from these countries are also eager to, to do the same. The way we treat my national UNDP is from a development lens. So we are not uh, operators, we, uh, but we do um, uh, a lot of uh, activities on institutional strengthening, institutional building, building of national capacities, alignment to international standards, um, linking uh, my nation with development uh, uh, plans and stressing, therefore, the linkages between my nation and, and sustainable development. So I'm very, very happy to be speaking here in, a, in this conference where uh, the, th the underlying theme is the link precisely between my nation and, and the SDGs, which remain our uh, most comprehensive and, and ambitious uh, global agenda, a global agenda for humanity. And as resident coordinator said uh, at the beginning, uh, we will be having a summit uh, in New York, a world summit, to reaffirm uh, uh, the global commitment towards uh, the goals. Uh, I think there is um, an element that has over time emerged as very important, seen as I an isolated sector, um, but it has to be integrated into the uh, overall uh, coordination structure of the government and has to have clear linkages, therefore, to the other component of, of uh, recovery and reconstruction, being it the key enabler. And um, I've seen it uh, through my own eyes now, um, in the journey we had from uh, Ganja to, to here, um, how absolutely vital and critical is going to be the, the man action activity to enable, to enable the, the, the recovery, the reconstruction, and the safe return of, of displaced population. And uh, I have to say, one of my colleagues who's here, uh, he was one of the first to enter this area, one of the first of UN officials to enter this area back in December 2020. And he was uh, telling me how impressed he was to see how quickly the, uh, the reconstruction has happened uh, of several buildings, including this one. So a lot of uh, appreciation and, uh, uh, for, the, for, the, the, for the efforts that are ongoing. Um, there has been a lot of uh, a good body of work that I have documented and highlighted the contribution of mine action to, to SDGs. Um, Angela from GICHD is going to go a little bit into details for that, so I'm not going to mention that, but um, I just want to say that um, we, uh, UNDP and GSC, uh, GSCHD had a, we published a, a study some time ago that uh, showed how my action directly contributed to about 12 SDGs, as it was mentioned uh, by uh, Mr. Husseinov. Um, we also had a study in, back in 2019 in, in Lebanon that shows how every dollar invested in mine action has a return in socioeconomic benefits of about more than four dollars. So, um, and this is all uh, about uh, um, land release and, uh, and uh, uh, opening up opportunities for economic activities um, as well as um, issues related to environmental conservations, not to mention, of course, the saving lives, which remains the, the, the main objective. I want to mention briefly, I was asked to reflect a bit on the, on the IDP returns. I think we have a, an opportunity, a momentum um, internationally. Um, back in uh, 2021, uh, a high-level panel on internal displacement uh, published its report. This was appointed by the UN Secretary General at the request of 56 uh, member states. And it was to shed the light, shed a light on the situation of IDPs who are about 70 million uh, worldwide, but are often invisible because they don't cross borders uh, and therefore don't call, don't uh, maybe attract international attention, but they, they suffer equally and they deserve um, attention and solidarity. So, in response to that, the Secretary General launched in, um, uh, in the summer of 2022 the uh, Action Agenda on Internal Displacement, which is um, basically a, a collective uh, commitment to support national governments who have the lead, of course, in the provision of solutions to IDPs 
um, in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in really dramatically reduce uh, the number of IDPs worldwide. Um, the guiding principle on internal displacement, which were published more than 20 years ago, remain valid, and um, they call for, of course, safe, voluntary, and dignified and informed um, return. It is important to hear the voices of the displaced population, understanding uh, what would be the factor that would encourage um, them to return, uh, their willingness, of course, to return, and, um, and of course, um, consider the return of, of the IDPs as um, uh, uh, as something that is where safety is first, but then is there's a, a whole broad range of other services that will need to be uh, provided. Um, I end by um, uh, really uh, congratulating and applauding uh, the, the government of Azerbaijan for the uh, declaration of the uh, SDG 18. It is very telling that we have uh, a senior official from the Ministry of Economy here to talk about this because this is exactly how uh, the integration of mine action into development plans uh, should happen. And um, I encourage the international community to continue to support um, Azerbaijan, the government of Azerbaijan, uh, in its efforts. Uh, and I, let me end by a word of appreciation and recognition to all the people involved in the, in the mining, not only those who are doing it now, but also those who are training to become uh, the miners as well. Thank you very much. Luca, thank you for your contribution and thank you for sticking to time. It's greatly appreciated. Um, our final contribution today is from Angela Hayas Ibora, uh, External Relations and Policy Advisor at the Geneva International Center for Humanitarian Demining. May I invite you to take the floor? Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's not easy to be the last presenter, so please bear with me. I try to keep it short and sweet. Um, but first, uh, I want to thank on behalf of the Geneva International Center for Humanitarian Demining, the hosts, both the ANAMA and, of course, the UN uh, in Azerbaijan for allowing us to contribute to this very important discussion and for this uh, to take place uh, with such distinguished panelists today. Um, I'll be presenting in the next minute some of the results and insights of the work that we've been conducting on linking mine action and SDGs. But on these efforts, um, we've only been able to achieve success thanks to collaborative uh, approaches, as mentioned by the, by the chairman of the board of the ANAMA. So I also want to thank our counterparts, which uh, are present today. So the Angola National Mine Action Authority, BHMAC, CIMA, of course, ARMAC, CMAA, and um, UNDP, and all the operators that contributed to all uh, the case studies that we are going to talk um, about. First, I will uh, share with you a very brief background to then uh, conclude with four very concrete examples from our uh, research and case studies. Try to accommodate everything here. Yeah. So, from uh, our perspective, uh, there is ample recognition uh, to the fact that uh, there are no one-sided uh, solutions for uh, humanitarian uh, challenges, problems, as everything is very interconnected today. So, there's a need to, to have a very comprehensive uh, approach, and in this regard, a strong alignment uh, with the 2030 agenda is crucial for maximizing the impact, effectiveness, and sustainability of mine action programs. In 2022, uh, there was an increase in the number of countries uh, facing protracted crisis, which concentrates 74% of the people in need. And um, also, the, the humanitarian funding needs were not met, uh, only 56% of it. So I think that uh, tells us something. And, and basically, we need to work in a more coordinated manner. We need to foster complementarity and coherence in line with this famous now triple nexus approach. So enhancing humanitarian development and peace efforts um, across the different um, actors and, and contexts. Um, 
We at the GICSD have been working on these studies that were briefly uh, mentioned by uh, Luca. I guess this graphic sounds familiar uh, for, for some of you. Uh, in 2017, we conducted this uh, joint uh, publication that was the first attempt to uh, initiate the discussion at the, at the global level on how mine action can contribute to different uh, SDGs. Initially, we identified these direct contributions to 12, indirect to 4. However, also looking at how important localization and national ownership is for the SDG process, for the SDG implementation, as well as for mine action, we decided to go one step further and start looking at specific contexts and tailor a methodology to understand how mine action can provide uh, multidimensional results in, in different contexts. And there, um, we initiated with a case study in Angola. Uh, based on the results of this study, we updated the methodology and conducted a pilot case study in, in Jordan, which served as the basis for a series of case studies in uh, Cambodia, Colombia, and Bosnia-Herzegovina. And we are about to launch three new case studies on uh, Iraq, South Sudan, and Somalia in the coming months. This is the first time that we use this, uh, this slide, which basically um, presents the cumulative results of all these eight uh, case studies. And there are some good news here. So basically, mine action can potentially contribute to more than 12 SDGs. We've identified direct contributions to 17 SDGs. And we are not only looking to humanitarian demining or land release here, but also we are looking at explosive ordinance, risk education, victim assistance, gender and diversity mainstreaming, as well as partnerships and cooperation in mine action. So it takes a, a more comprehensive approach. Uh, for time constraints, I don't have uh, the possibility to go through the methodology, but basically it's based on cross-referencing primary information from field visits, um, interviews, and satellite imagery, and that's an important point that I'll get back later with uh, secondary information, le relevant literature, and of course, uh, reports. I will start now with uh, the first uh, example I want to share with you. It's uh, from uh, the Cambodia case study. In there, I think it's quite uh, self-explanatory. So we have two images, one from 2009, with, uh, when clearance started, and the other one is from 2020, when we published the, the case study. So basically, it took uh, five years to finalize the, the clearance operations there. And I wanted to use this example to explain how sometimes um, results in terms of infrastructure can cascade down to many other uh, aspects. In here, we can see how um, there was, of course, an expansion of these uh, secondary roads, which in turn contributed to uh, the expansion of agricultural fields, diversification of crops, in this uh, specific case we are talking about cassava fields, improvement in housing conditions and also access to water through the construction of irrigation ponds. In this particular example, we were able to identify that in contributions to four uh, SDGs. The second uh, case is from the Somalia case study. Uh, you are very privileged because we haven't presented this yet, so with the permission of Dahir, the director of CIMA, I'm sharing some initial insights with you today. Um, this is a, a very specific and, I think, relevant case because it illustrates how mine action can be a very important factor for climate, uh, climate change resilience. So basically, after land release and in close partnership with local um, organizations, um, there was a possibility to uh, rehabilitate and, and, and improve the quality of, of the land um, through the construction of, um, of uh, soil uh, ponds, uh, and also the, the, the plants, uh, the, oh, sorry, <laughs> the plant tree saplings. Sorry about, about that because I'm, I'm having a problem with the notes here. Uh, but basically, in there, we were able to identify, uh, identify again, six uh, contributions uh, to SDGs and many targets under these uh, SDGs. Another important uh, case uh, comes from uh, Colombia. This is a very different one. In here, we are talking about how mine action can serve as a confidence and security building measure. Uh, the case of Colombia is, I think, uh, well known, but basically mine action played an important role in different phases of the peace agreement, 
basically during the negotiation and mediation phases, um, there were different initiatives related to humanitarian demining, including a pilot that was conducted by both um, the Colombian uh, Armed Forces and also the FARC combatants, and it was a, a very fruitful collaboration that showcased how uh, these efforts can uh, enhance the effectiveness of mine action by reducing the, the time in operations through information setting. Also, uh, through the establishment of Humanicemos de H, which is an NGO composed by former combatants, there was a possibility to reintegrate and, and give access to uh, uh, regular income to former combatants and other like affected uh, communities in different parts of, of Colombia. In here we can see uh, direct contributions to four um, SDGs and several targets under, under this. Yeah. The last example comes from the Bosnia case study. Um, this is uh, an example that we've only been able to find in this, in this context. Uh, basically, there, there was a massive flood in 2014, and the main problem was that the areas surrounding the, the river uh, were contaminated, so there was no access for all the repairing and maintenance works. So only after land release, uh, there was an opportunity to, to enhance and, and, and repair this infrastructure and also to build uh, one of the most uh, important uh, transportation uh, networks, uh, which is the corridor uh, BC. In here, we saw direct contribution to three other um, SDGs. With this, uh, I hope I <laughs> stick to the time. Um, we remember be attentive in case you have any comments, and tomorrow there will be available publications in the back in the room for logistical reasons. We thought it was worth it to keep it for, for tomorrow. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Angela, thank you very much. Uh, I'm sure, ladies and gentlemen, you will all agree with me uh, that the panelists' contribution have been absolutely first rate today uh, and will add tremendously to the outcomes of the conference today. Uh, I uh, am now going to move into the uh, wrap-up phase, uh, which is going to be extremely short. Uh, we wanted it to be uh, at least 30 minutes, uh, but I'm not going to have uh, that opportunity. But as the speakers were making their uh, deliberations, I uh, was casting my mind back. Um, whenever we would meet with President uh, Ilham Aliyev as the European Union or the European Parliament, uh, he would never allow any meeting to finish without underlining his absolute commitment to progress and development, but not just for Azerbaijan. He would be absolutely clear that that progress and development must be for the entire region and beyond. And I think that is why when we hear um, United Nations, uh, Vladanka was very clear today in demonstrating the commitment that the United Nations and other international agencies are able to give to the progress that is taking place here uh, in Azerbaijan today. Uh, the demining, resettlement, coexistence, None of that can come about without collaboration. Azerbaijan cannot do this on its own. It needs the international community to show the sort of commitment that the United Nations has done. And indeed, His Excellency, uh, former Prime Minister of Kyrgyzstan, Mr. Otrbayev, also indicated that the region beyond the South Caucasus, Central Asia itself, is looking towards Azerbaijan to set a very strong precedent today. And I'm pleased to see that the evidence on the ground is that Azerbaijan's direction of travel remains that initial commitment that this must be a win-win for all. Ladies and gentlemen, please would you accept on behalf of the panel from me a very real thanks, a sincere thank you for being so attentive despite having such a long journey in arriving here uh, you have all been very well behaved. Thank you for that. And ladies and gentlemen, would you be so kind as to uh, offer our appreciation to our panelists who really have been fantastic today. Thank you.
Thank you very much, dear panelists, for your uh, comprehensive thoughts regarding the topic. I believe all of us learned some new perspective on the issue. Uh, I figured that you all should be hungry by now, and we, we are ready and eager to provide you with lunch, but on one condition, you'll have to gather for a group photo in front of the Ardem Conference Center, uh, which is located outside, right behind the stage, right behind this monitor. For this, you will have to go left, turn left, and then left again. But uh, one thing that I want you to pay attention for, as, as you exit the building, uh, I would love you to uh, pay attention on your right. You will see a car, or let's say remains of the car, uh, in which recently three Azerbaijani experts on the mining, uh, expert on drone usage, lost their lives uh, in a mine incident. I think uh, the details you see there will prove why these kind of conferences are really important. Thank you very much. You may use these doors to exit, please. There are doors on the left. On the left of me and on your right.